points out. My point. Well, that's just fine, son, but let's see you hit one over the roof. <clears throat> well, isn't the gentlemen of honor taking their daily constitutional? <laughs> My dear old tuna. Dear young friend Alexis, Colonel Poindexter, on this most happy, most auspicious occasion, permit me as a true old friend to tender my best, my very best congratulations. <laughs> you do us honor, Reverend. Not at all. <laughs> In fact, I've uh, taken the liberty of preparing a few remarks for this afternoon's festivities uh, with your permission, Colonel. Oh, by all means. You? <clears throat> May fortune bless you. May the little distance of your young life be pleasant as the foreground, the joyous foreground. And when you have reached it, may that which is now the far off horizon, but which will then have become the middle distance, in fruitful promise be exceeded only by that which will have opened in the meantime into a new and glorious horizon. Oh. And may your joys be numberless as the Syrian tents that shine in the deserts of Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia? Oh, 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 oh dear sir! Oh, that, I say, that is an excellent example of an old school of stately compliment to which I have through life been much addicted. We oblige me with a copy of in clerkly manuscript, that I myself may use it on appropriate occasions. Sir, we shall have a fairly written copy. A young golden blob has sunk in itself beneath the deserts of Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia? Oh, oh, oh. You don't get near that part. Yellow belly sap sucker. Oh, yellow belly sap sucker. Oh. Hey, try. I say try to pull yourself together, boy. Nice boy, but he doesn't pay no mind. Y'all say he had in two shakes of dog's tail. Oh, Rapture. Yes, you are a fortunate young gentleman. Lean is wealthy and comes from a good family. Why, she's the 7,037th direct descendant of Helen of Troy. Good stock. Sure, that was an affair with Paris, but what family, other than my own, has no flaw, hmm? Father. I am overcome by a powerful emotion, like an untamed waterfall cascading over mountain rocks of natural love into the, the liquid pond of her soul, where the two of us, untainted by the pollution of sorrow, flow together like goose feathers to the sea of eternity. Alexis, please, a little decorum. A gentleman does not speak so overly of his love for a lady. It's not, I say, it's not proper manners. But, Father, when a man loves as I love... I'll have none of that, sir. I'll have you know that 30 years ago, I madly loved your future mother-in-law, Madame saint -Gajor. Yes, that's right. And I have reason to believe that she returned my love. But were we guilty of the indelicacy of publicly rushing each other's arms, exclaiming, Magnolia Blossom! Oh, beloved joy! My bloody blossom! My boy! Boy! Oh! <laughs> Which seems to be the modern fashion of today's youth. Time imagine it would have done you some good. No, it was. <laughs> Madam, I trust you in the enjoyment of good health. So, you are vastly polite. A protest I might have. And so forth, and so on. Much more delicate, much more respectful. Oh, but look, yonder comes the lead. Let us retire for a moment so that she may compose herself for the ceremony. Come, I say come, young sir. We shall return after we finish your badminton lesson. <laughs> 